As an artist, there are three important tools that we constantly want to be exercising and maintaining throughout our career or our lifetime. Our visual acuity, dexterity, and critical thinking. In this video, I'm focusing mostly on our vision, and I have an exercise to help improve our ability to correlate correct corresponding values with the local colors we are interpreting and recreating. This is not a step-by-step -step video, but more of a lecture on the concept with three demonstrations to support the topic. I'm using black and white gouache and extra smooth printer paper, which as you'll see holds up amazingly well to this water medium. As for my painting, I'm summarizing what I see which will help keep me from getting caught up in the small things, the details, the stuff that matters less. The initial drawing is a loose sketch to further help me from starting small, one object at a time, and remind me to focus on the big picture relationships, like starting big and working towards the smaller shapes, and like starting in the background and working towards the foreground. Since gouache is a layering medium, take full advantage of that stack that paint. And another big picture concept, start with either a middle dark or dark value since the paper is white. And this helps to solidify both ends of the value scale, the white and the black or the white light and the dark, making it much easier to see the remaining values that sit between each of these extremes. So all the rest of the values that are in the picture are somewhere in between white and black. Having those two ends already in front of you makes gauging the rest of those values much easier to do. Color is value. Value is color. We don't see in black and white, but the camera does. The invention of the camera helped us justify this concept of values within colors. Black and white photography captures the values of the colors and shows us how dark or how light they are in an orderly manner. Color can appear really chaotic with so many of them out there. Reducing the colors down to their values sheds light on the common relationships and contrasts amongst those colors, which can be seen in the values. All of the hues can be the same value at the same time if the right condition arises. This is why art schools usually begin their curriculum with drawing only classes. These classes are supposed to help us find this color value relationship as we learn to draw the world around us with our pencils, our pastels, and our charcoal tools. There is an orderliness to our training the eye and the mind to recognize in the complexity this simplicity. Thinking with these simple tools that helps make capturing the subject with clear, easy to use shapes, then values to help define their forms that we eventually overlay with hue or color that makes up what we see of the surface. The surface is part local value and the surrounding light that influences or alters those local color values. Using a paint medium is helpful in generating solid, flat values, where dry media is porous and makes generating accurate values a little more challenging, and in many cases more labor-intensive and time-consuming. Not that I'm using these as conveniences or excuses to use paint. Exercises are not intended to generate beautiful works of art, but sometimes the byproduct can be something intelligent and impressive, effortless, simple, yet complex. Exercises like jumping jacks and push-ups are intended to help us strengthen our skills, sharpen our minds and our eyes, refine our dexterity, and build a better understanding of the tools and concepts that we use, and so many more things that we can benefit from in doing exercises. Keep your focus, loosen up to tighten down, and when you have a result that roughly corresponds with your intent, move on to the next one, then the next one, and so on. This will keep you from turning exercises into lengthy studies fixated on making it look good for whatever ego-feeding need we're stuck in at the moment. To prevent this from happening, set clear goals and define what it is you seek. Once you have a result, move on to the next one, redefine the goal to reset your head, and work toward that intended goal again for the next exercise. Any exercise you can do that involves paint is also a chance to practice application where we can try new things with the handling of paint that we don't dare do when we have a job or a commission. I use these exercises for both visual upkeep as well as for the handling of the paint. Drawing is painting and painting is drawing, therefore how can I handle paint more and more like I'm just drawing with it? 
which is where I sometimes feel the most comfortable when I'm drawing. Many more hours were spent drawing than painting in my training, so it makes sense that I'd feel more relaxed in the drawing stages. As you might have noted, these studies start off with the paint thinned with a lot of water and end much drier in application. Gouache is water-based, water being the vehicle that helps push and spread the paint across the surface. The more water used, the looser the paint is to spread out in a larger space, but at the cost of the pigment being very transparent, not indicative of the value it represents. Once the pigment is spread across the surface, it acts as a slide for a successive brush strokes to be softer and easier to apply and spread if necessary. In the example you see on the screen, I started this painting with a painted drawing, which makes it light in value. In this particular example, I started it with a painted drawing, thinned out with a lot of water, which makes it really lightweight and non-obtrusive to anything that I'm going to paint over the top of it. I started this with a painted drawing. Using the paint, it's thinned down enough with water that it won't mix together with anything that I overlap it with. Because they are extremely thin with water, they are merely a stain on the surface. The old masters would sometimes start a painting with an ink drawing, dark enough to see the line work, but thin enough not to show through the eventual layers of pigment painted over them. This thinned down paint is similar in effect. And of course, these paintings are clearly sped up. Each painting at normal speed took roughly 10 to 12 minutes. Not that speed matters, but they're small enough that they can be accomplished. And because they're not in color, they're only in grayscale, they eventually become very quick and easy to do. As you gain more experience and confidence with the tools, they'll take you less and less time to generate for yourself. But don't let time beat you up if it takes a while to build. As the saying goes, you learn at the speed of you, which means you can't speed up your learning. The goal is not to be fast, it's to be accurate with the goal of the exercise. In this case, do the values of the grayscale paintings match the color values of the reference? Why do we want to do exercises like this to see values more accurately? Besides matching the reference, to understand that color has value is very important in learning to control color. It's not just colorful or dull, it's also light or dark, warm or cool, direct or implied. These properties of color become a part of our design toolbox that we use to strengthen a focal point or to harmonize the painting or to create gradations where we don't see them necessarily, to merge colors together rather than separate them out with such sharp acute contrast to adjust in value or chroma which is their colorfulness or their hue or so much more that toolbox is huge it's extensive and the only way that we can acquire it is through studies we don't paint just to copy something we see we entertain we educate we humor we raise questions we stir the imagination and so much more like an actor or performer there are tools and rules then there are much deeper tools of the craft or trade and concepts related to the mind and how we capture the attention of an audience, sustain their interest, affect them mentally or emotionally, and entertain them so much and so well that they come back again and again. They become our core audience. Exercises like the one you see here are important to help us build a better and stronger academic baseline so we can focus mostly on the message we intend and the performance to portray or impart that message. When I make a change to the value that I'm working with on my palette, I mix it next to the previous value I was using or a similar neighboring value to compare them to one another. By mixing them right next to each other, this helps see that real deliberate change in the mixture even when that mixture is extremely subtle. I paint the black outlines around each painting when I'm nearly done completing it. This generates a frame. Putting a frame around any art gives it a satisfying feeling of completion, even when the image isn't completely finished. The bold picture window transforms the image into a place in time and space, which we are viewing through that window. The thicker the frame, the more window-like the viewing space becomes. In this case, the frame is also the darkest value I can generate and paint with, giving me the extreme end of the value scale, which in turn helps me judge all the various values in the picture window, from the white of the paper to the black of this pigment, and make adjustments where necessary.
This last painting was quite a challenge with the dense layering of space it presents. It can be challenging to imply depth if each object is painted separately. This is where grouping as a tool is important to use, and abstracting the shapes makes it easier to complete the scene. You'll learn how to shorthand the complexity of nature if you practice painting it. You'll also learn that you don't need to paint every leaf to successfully paint a tree or a bush. Or for that matter, you don't have to count and paint every rock along the riverbed. The nice thing about gouache is that it's reactive. So if you don't like what you've done, you can scrub it out or add to it to change the color, value, or intensity. This is one big reason why gouache is so good for studies like these. While I tried to be versatile with the brushes, I started with a lot of brushes in the very beginning, but it's not always necessary to use all of them. A painting can be completed using the same brush for everything. However, some might slow down the process. Others may not produce as convincing a mark as you're looking for, but that doesn't mean you can't do the entire painting with just one brush. If you want to learn more about this process or other important tips to help you grow as an artist, sign up to this YouTube channel and check out my site, Lemonade.com. And if you'd like to level up or need help with your art, your work, or your projects, I also do personalized mentorship where you get one-on-one -on -one training and assistance. Thank you for watching. I hope this has helped or inspired you to continue to grow and level up.